Hi there. Um, thanks for sticking with us on this Friday afternoon. Always a very grateful spot to be in a full week program. <laughs> um, I was invited here, and thanks for the invitation, by the way, to talk about crowdsourcing policy input. Now, what does that mean? It actually means that you can lend a voice to any citizen, entrepreneur or, or other, to have a voice in what politicians will decide for you. And in this era where you don't know what the next politician is going to be that's going to decide over your future, that's quite important and quite powerful, that you remain in control even you know, when the politicians are in place, you can still influence them. Every single citizen can still influence policymaking, lawmaking, while the legislation is going on. And the reason why I care personally a lot about this topic, um, let me see if I can go through there. They are not the only ones bringing their kids to events every once in a while. It kind of helps to settle the crowd. I brought my kids uh, about a year ago. After that, they never, ever wanted to go with me again because they, they kind of fear that I would do it to them again. Uh, as you can see, them clinging to us. Um, so we have a household with five kids now, all between eight and 12. Obviously, I cheated. Uh, the two clinging to my uh, kind of sides are my two ch uh, children. The three others are my stepdaughters. But having five kids in the house, day in, day out, kind of raised my sense of urgency about tomorrow's economy, tomorrow's jobs. And looking around, um, I kind of felt that we would have to step it up slightly if we want to be sure that there's going to be jobs left whenever they hit the job market in 10, 15, 20 years' time, depending on how long they're going to take to graduate, if they graduate at all. Um, and so this led me about four years ago now, I think, to the creation of the network that was just mentioned called Startups OBE. It's a network that unifies and brings together everybody, individual and organization, that cares about technology entrepreneurship in this case. Because I heard from experienced technology entrepreneurs that there's great opportunities with the technologies that are coming, and we've got a great brain set across Europe. We've got great talent coming out of universities and research centers. We're just not that good at bringing those innovations and those new technologies and those new ideas to the market. And so first of all, I created a network here at Belgian level that brings all of those brains and the brain power together to kind of create a more efficient way for entrepreneurs to bring their innovations to the market. Having now in the network about 1,500 Belgian startups and about 180 of organizations that are professionally occupied with them, that's a quite powerful network at national level. What we do, first of all, but less relevant in this context, is that we connect the dots. We make sure these entrepreneurs have quick access to potential customers and talent and investors, and the vice versa. Anybody can access innovation uh, in our country if, uh, if they're looking for that. But secondly, and more importantly here, is that unifying all of those brains, all of those individuals, um, of course, we know a lot about what's going on in that startup ecosystem at Belgian level. So we've been gathering a whole lot of data, but also gathering a whole lot of insights from all of those brains and bringing that together in one single network. That actually created, almost by accident, a very powerful public voice. If you bring together 1,500 startups, thousands of entrepreneurs into one network, suddenly you become relevant to policymakers. And that's what happened about a year and a half ago when we, uh, for the very first time, uh, following the example of Neely Cruz, who was uh, then still a European commissioner for Digital Agenda, we had a new government coming in, national government, and all of a sudden there was a minister for digital agenda in the Belgian government with a blank sheet in front of him, basically. And we had the opportunity, because he knew we already had a vast network, he said to me, like, if you can come over to me and then represent the entrepreneurs and tell me what they need, I'm ready to make it happen. Now, there's an opportunity, obviously, but who am I to talk for those thousands of entrepreneurs? And that's what kind of led me um, into the wondrous world of crowdsourcing, because at that point we decided, with a very, very tight window uh, of, of time uh, at our hands, to crowdsource that policy input, to ask the entrepreneurs and anyone working with entrepreneurs, what needs to be changed? Stop whining, stop complaining about why Belgium is a crappy place to be an entrepreneur. Tell me how we can make it a beautiful place for entrepreneurs. Tell me how we can improve the entrepreneurial climate. And actually surprised us quite a bit, because in just uh, two weeks 
week's time of, of campaigning and asking around, we got hundreds of, of very lovely and very interesting proposals coming in, leaving us one week of time to kind of process that and have it ready to uh, hand it over to the minister. So uh, we lost a couple of weeks sleep over that. And actually, one of the next speakers on this stage this afternoon, Omar Mohut, is one of our co-authors. So uh, definitely also credit to him. Uh, I definitely did, didn't do this alone. But so in a couple of weeks' time, we got all of those beautiful ideas into um, kind of one office and, and we processed them, tried to summarize them and make them as practical as possible, summarizing them in these five topics. Now that was about 18 months ago. And it was already kind of a nice achievement to have that list of recommendations and of ideas out there, but that doesn't make them reality, right? So what we did after that is really work on a day-to-day -day basis with policymakers and key decision takers at companies to make it happen, to make it implementable. And so, for example, on the Startup Inc., uh, kind of what, what was more focused as a topic on legislation and, and, and that you know, VAT and fiscal regime and that type of thing, we actually were able to implement a whole lot of the recommendations that were voiced by the entrepreneurs. A tax shelter for angel investment, for example, was introduced. Uh, kind of modernized legislation on e-commerce, because it was still forbidden to have night labor in our country up to a couple of months ago. If you're running an e-commerce company and you can't process your orders overnight, I can tell you, people start ordering from your neighbor countries. And that was what ha was what happening at that point in time. So being able to change that legislation, to modernize that legislation, actually enabled e-commerce companies in Belgium to stay alive. On a second topic, we try to advocate more that you know, whatever they need, the one thing they need first is customers. So if you want to help entrepreneurs and startups, just start buying from startups. And while you're at it, why don't you buy a startup? You know, that's easier, cheaper, faster innovation in the first place, in many cases, rather than trying to do it on your own. So open up your mind to working with startups. Although it comes with a slight risk, it's also usually cheaper, easier, faster. And so there come, there come a lot of advantages with the potential disadvantages of working with these small, agile companies. And actually, we were kind of targeting that message at the big companies. But we were quite surprised to see that it was the government agencies that picked it up first. So the city council of Antwerp, a city just 50 kilometers of, uh, north of here, actually picked it up quite fast and said like, okay, this is interesting. This is something we want to do. We as a city council want to work with and buy from startups. So please advise us on how to do that. And again, Omar and I were uh, heavily involved in helping them uh, in, in setting that wheel in motion and to call out challenges instead of big tendering procedures, they started putting uh, out challenges like, this is a problem that we're facing. Who has a good idea to solve that? And make it small, you know, so that people can handle it. Smaller companies can actually have an answer to that. So instead of writing 150 pages about the potential solution that they were looking for, they were just saying, like, hey, this is the problem we're facing. You know, who has a great idea? And from that started a really, really good col collaboration with dozens and dozens of startups right now that are collaborating with the city services in the city of Antwerp to make those ideas happen day to day. On a third account, education and cultivation, I must admit that it was the slowest one to, uh, to kick into action. It's, uh, it just started a couple of months ago, finally uh, uh, being implemented and being processed. But now there is a national coalition on e-skills forming uh, to make sure that everybody that's actually working on educating into the skills of the future, the skills of the 21st century, is talking to each other, is collaborating, is learning from each other, is reaching out also to their counterparts in other countries. And very recently, the national government has actually raised a digital Belgium skills fund, which will focus on the opportunity of e-skills training and e-skills education to actually prevent radicalization. Because it's, in the end, not rocket science. It's doable for anybody with a logic mind and talent and good motivation. They can become the digital professionalist of tomorrow. And we're going to try to help them through that fund to actually grab that opportunity, have a sense of purpose, have something meaningful to do, and kind of integrate into the society instead of going rogue. Another aspect is that we started bringing entrepreneurs out in the open. They started talking very publicly in schools and you know, uh, sports clubs, in business school trainings. Everywhere today, you see entrepreneurs taking the stage, taking a half a day off of their you know, day-to-day business to share their experiences, to share their dreams, to share how and why running a business actually makes sense to them and why it might be inspirational for other people to do so. And having role models is quite important if you want to drive change. 
And lastly, especially as Belgians, we were pretty bad at selling ourselves. So we kind of tried to get as many people to open up about the success stories that, and the, the successes that they had actually achieved and try to work with media to cover that a bit more. Because media has a tendency of covering mostly and particularly the failures. And you know, very, uh, uh, in, uh, very often, they forget to talk about success stories. And so now, startups have become hot and startups are being covered and entrepreneurship and, and running business is being covered by mainstream media on a day-to-day -day basis. And so in doing so, we've actually in 18 months' time, thanks to all of those lovely people that were bringing in their ideas, we've actually been able to make a change in their day-to-day -day lives of entrepreneurs and businesses in Belgium. And we were not the only country or the only region to do so. There were others doing pretty similar stuff, not always with the same impact. And often that was because they didn't create that manifesto movement from a crowdsourcing perspective. They actually invited a couple of bright people to write the recommendations and to voice you know, the, the ideas of how to make a better entrepreneur climate, and however bright these people might be, if you don't have that bearing surface, it will not have the same impact. If you don't have the same strength, the same voice, the same public voice, politicians are less inclined to listen. And so sharing our expertise on how that went with actually crowdsourcing that entire document kind of pioneered Belgium into the policy uh, kind of input and, and policy crowdsourcing movement across Europe. And we kind of, where we were usually lagging behind in all of the kind of measurements and all of the, the lists out there, we actually started uh, running on top of those lists. And it was very interesting. And so we started working with other regions and other countries that wanted to do something similar and sharing our expertise actually helped, for example, Portugal and Poland to also crowdsource a manifesto and to start working with their policy makers on a day-to-day -day basis. So now, especially at Belgian level, that means that startups have a voice at all policy levels. City level, regional level, national level, European Commission level. And that's quite important and it was something that we wanted to hang on to. And so we said instead of doing this every once in a while, you know, whenever th somebody thinks of it and we have a couple of days to spare, why don't we do that type of thing consistently throughout the year in unity across Europe? <laughs> So we actually designed a European startup network, a network of networks, where at present 21 national startup associations have joined forces representing over 25,000 startups and businesses across Europe, working day to day on crowdsourcing policy recommendations and working with regional, national and European policymakers to make them happen. And that's all because we want to make sure we don't miss out on any idea out there in the market, any idea that might be floating in this room. So please, if you feel like contributing to the entrepreneurial climate in your country, make sure to reach out and make sure to have your voice heard. And these beautiful people will make sure that that voice doesn't stay in the four walls of this type of uh, uh, room or auditorium, but it will resonate into the policymakers' offices and the politicians' offices. That's what I was here to share, that it takes a lot of effort to make sure that they listen. But once the channels are there, your voice is a very, very important and a very, very loud voice. Any questions about that? <laughs> Thank you very much, Karen. Uh, I think we have time for one more, one question, at least. Anyone? Oh, no? okay. 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 We'll leave, we'll leave Thank it. you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Karen.